So do you have the <laughs> material? Yeah. <laughs> I've written a number down on to this phone. Yeah. <laughs> so I want you to look, look at, at that. Here. <laughs> and uh, see if that number works for you. Cool. <laughs> I think we're good, guys. So. All right, let's talk about One Piece. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, so, um, well, I think I just want to start out with uh, asking all of you guys, um, you know, what did you guys think when you heard that Battle of the Gods would get a theatrical release in America? Uh, pure excitement uh, from this end. I, I think it's fantastic that finally uh, Dragon Ball Z is uh, is getting the attention that I think all of us have wanted it to get for 20 years. Yeah, I mean, ever since there were rumors that like even one of our old movies or something was going to make it in the theaters a, way, a while back. I don't know if you guys remember that. Right before like Dragon Ball Z Evolution came out, we, I think Funimation was trying really hard to get some of their films in the theaters. Uh, unsuccessfully and it was ironically that weekend that they were really trying to pitch getting all those movies into the theater was that, like on that Monday I was going to have uh, Dragon Ball Z like evolution right so it was a disappointment back then when those features didn't make it into the uh, into the theater so this is really exciting and I, I personally felt uh, through the whole Dragon Ball Z uh, life in America that it's always it's always been in, in terms of you know mainstream popularity or in terms of just you know right below where it deserved you know what i mean like it was we all as fans all knew it was awesome and, and the people out there who do think it was awesome but i always felt like it, it, it should have been in theaters a long time ago so yeah. it's yeah it is it's, i kind of agree with my colleagues here that uh it's something that we always felt like you know dragon ball z deserved and that you know we're all excited about it i was so. disappointed <laughs> <laughs> i'm still waking up so the dragon ball z features have always also been a lot shorter than True. what your typical feature length film would be and so finding out that the uh, the runtime for this was an actual feature length was i think a, a big uh, a big help because when talking about kind of the time chris is talking about we would Sorry. we were trying to fold several of the features together like uh, maybe the broly movies like, trying to put them all together but it, it just didn't have the same you know the same it doesn't have a movie structure but, it tends to be a little bit more serialized. And this movie doesn't. This movie is, is a great, you know, in fact, you could have never watched Dragon Ball before and get what's going on. Because they, 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 there's a lot of kind of not, there's a lot of attention that's paid to, like, well, to, to me it seemed like when they wrote it that, mm -hmm. like, like they're writing it for Dragon Ball Z fans and for people who've never seen it. That's mm -hmm. the way the story There's a lot of fan service in it. Yeah. But it's not, not too complicated of a story where you have to be a fan in order to Yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm going to just say things to Chris and interpret them for me. At the same time, though, I think this this movie, I mean, we're derailing your questions here, so we may be answering many past what you've just asked, but I think the beautiful thing about this movie is it is accessible to the, you know, to the fan of Dragon Ball Z who may be a surface level fan, but I think there's a deeper philosophy for this movie that echoes so much of the messaging of the series and, uh, and of these characters. Yeah. I really think it's, I mean, it really has something for everyone. <laughs> Um, so we, <laughs> very nice. Uh, so we've been waiting a really long time to see Battle of the Gods. You know, ever, ever since we heard uh, that they were making it, um, we've been wondering when are they going to bring it out. You know, how hard was the process to actually get it over to, to bring it out in the U.S. and and get uh, get it dubbed? Very easy. You've waited, <laughs> you've waited a long time, right? Yes. <laughs> actually, I, I wasn't part of the process. Uh, I mean, just I guess it was more of the process of the the crew that actually went into the. Uh, into the trenches to pull Dragon Ball Z Battle of Gods out of uh, out of wherever it was. You had to go to Japan and do a ritual. Yeah. <laughs> they you own know, his with, blood now. With Kira Toyama and Toye, they were just like, you know, if you can pass these tests, you will get the Battle of the Gods. And he passed. <laughs> so barely, can't, barely. I can't really talk more about that because uh, apparently I, they'd come kill me if I did. Oh, here's, oh. I have things I'm supposed to talk about. No, no, no. I'm oh. just showing you that. Oh, you're so showing me that. Just showing you the title, too. Oh, cool. Battle of Gods. Oh, yeah. I think any time that such a high-profile title, uh, you know, and looking at trying to bring it stateside, uh, will always carry with it a little bit more challenges than, uh, than will a, a regular uh, series or something to that effect. So, and of course, this is about as high-profile as it gets. Yeah. Now, this might be uh, an odd question, but have you guys... Um have you guys met and worked with Akira Toriyama before? I have not. I have met Akira Toriyama one time, and it wasn't it wasn't just me and Akira Toriyama. Trust me. The <laughs> date about oh gosh, maybe nineteen, maybe two thousand one, when um, Shonen Jump was released in the states, where they announced that their Shonen Jump was coming to America. 
they had a press event at maybe E3 or something like that. It might, might have actually been its own event. Um, and I was lucky enough to go out there uh, and he was, they had brought him to the United States to talk to everyone and he was just so nervous. He's, he does not like to leave his house apparently. He's very agoraphobic. So he was like sweating from head to toe. And I will say that the most interesting question was asked to him in that panel. Someone said, what happened to launch? Like, where did she go? And oh he, yeah, I remember launch. Yeah, yeah, because she was such an important character in, in Dragon Ball, and then she just sort of disappeared. And his answer was, he 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 bowed his head, kind of in shame. He goes, "I'm sorry, I, I just forgot." He <laughs> 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 forgot about it. But it's it's very it's a rare opportunity to meet him, and uh, I didn't get to speak to him for very long because he I think they were just trying to get him in and out because I don't think he likes to kind of be in the public spotlight very much. Um, so, so Sean, um, it seems like every level of, of Saiyan, you know, you have to scream longer and longer. So yeah. from going into God mode, how close did you come to passing out? Well, there was no, uh, uh, the passing out thing really, uh, just to clarify, um, and I don't mind admitting I passed out because I rather enjoyed it, was in Dragon Ball GT for Super Saiyan 4, and I had been working a lot of hours and not sleeping well, and I just passed out, really enjoyed it, but... <laughs> I did. I don't know why, but on Super Saiyan God mode, um, and and for all the there's only so high and loud you can scream. So for all the Super Saiyan levels, I just kept making it more chill and more deeper and darker because his animation seemed to lend it that way. And and it was like again, there was only so high and loud I could scream. For God mode, we actually kind of had to craft the voice around the game we did before this, which had Super Saiyan God mode in it. And I was planning on doing something maybe a little different, but I I noticed that Masuka Nozawa didn't. And I started thinking about it, and I was like, you know, we got to do this game. Let's just uh, let's stick with what you know, a general Super Saiyan style voice, keep a Goku, because that's really what it's all about. And then for the film, um, I actually had trouble recording King Kai because uh, I got uh, sick during recording, which I tend to do, and uh, I don't know why. I've always had this belief that Sean gets sick during the recordings because he never wants Dragon Ball Z to end. Like, <laughs> He's just like, if I get sick, then I can still record it tomorrow, tomorrow right? And then I'll have more. <laughs> um, and I was, so recording Goku and going past out, there was definitely some screams that were really crazy that I just, uh, I couldn't handle, I don't think. And so we just did a lot of splicing together. Like, I, mean, I was just like, okay, this is just, there was oh. one in particular. I'm going to brag on Sean, though. The, he does some screams in Battle of the Gods that are insane. <laughs> insane. They're awesome, and the, we we actually kind of went above and beyond in this one section where we saw an opportunity to take something where Masuka Nozawa, uh, the original Goku voice, like stopped screaming at one point. But we looked at it, and we're like, you know what? Go, our Goku's going to scream a lot longer all the, way through, <laughs> all the way through the cut. And I spoke to the the mixer, um, Nathaniel. This Harrison. is news to me. Uh, yeah, this is news to Sean, and it was just yesterday that. Uh, he added some spectral type effect to to Super Saiyan God's voice and his attack yells. <laughs> He'll be adding some sort of subtle effects to Goku's voice to make really. It well, now is that like a um um what's it in, in contact where you call it bit shaping or bit uh, dithering? No, not dithering. What's it called? Talk to bit, me in bit crunching. Is that not bit crunching. Talk to me in technical terms. What exactly is, is it? <laughs> I haven't I haven't gotten to play with it. He said he found he was using some sort of specific plug-in that. Um, is it a spectral reverb like they used to have in the old contact days where it's like oh, it's really shifting? We'll have or? to do a different, like, I'll call him literally after this. You know, oh, I'm very excited about that. Like, I'm very excited about that. I can tell you that he just spent a lot of money on a bunch of new plugins, plugins to do yeah, it. Okay. He, did, he used some toys, some special toys to make Goku. So he's going to have dialogue, he's going to have this kind of effect on I think voice? he's going to have some oh, sort wow. of weird effect on his That's voice just cool. to kind of differentiate it. That's going to nice. blow my mind. I'm, I haven't seen the final mix. I just, I recorded like a couple weeks ago. Um, came back and then they're just, you know, just rushing to, to get this mix exactly where it needs to be for the, the, the to get tomorrow's premiere. Nathaniel has gone for two weeks with no sleep. Really? Just about. I, I gotta. He's, I, man, I owe him. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, it's gonna be pretty, pretty exciting mix, I think. And I, I forgot that it's. Oh, passing out. No, I didn't pass out. Got sick during the Kai stuff, King Kai stuff. Um, and that, that turned out good, I think. Did it turn out good? I don't know. I was sick. Did you watch the whole film first? Yeah, <laughs> it, it turned out fine. Sean, even when he, he, even when Sean thinks he's doing it poorly, he's actually not doing it poorly. 
like uh, it's actually good. I'm really hard. It's because he's now that he's reached uh, the, the <laughs> Super Saiyan God mode. He looks at you know the ascended level two as being you know. Yeah, whatever, a joke. And I, and I wonder how this. And this is just something to me. Growing up in a, as a minister's son, and uh, and and the usage of the word God in this particular one. Um, I wonder how American audiences are going to interpret that versus, say, audiences in other countries. Because to me, the script reads as um, Greek god archetype, not just archetype. so. You have Beerus, Weiss, and then Goku's now joined them in this god mode. Whoa! No, I, I was under the impression that he became Super Saiyan <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Which is, by the way, the name is in my phone for Justin. Years ago, yeah. I noticed he had the blonde hair and the beard, and I thought you're like Super Saiyan Jesus, and he's in my phone as Super Saiyan yeah. Jesus. <laughs> So my nickname for Justin for 10 or more years has been Super Saiyan Jesus. So that's really, you should have just taken over Goku for this movie. So Super <laughs> Saiyan Jesus is going to do it. <laughs> no. And even Kyle is your son, so... Oh, that's true. That's true. Kyle, is my son, is on there, so that's... Yeah. So, yeah. That's true. <laughs> you guys have other questions? Yes. Yes. Sorry, yes. yes. So, uh, um, so uh, you guys actually got to uh, sing as Goku and Vegeta in this movie. I did not sing. You didn't what? sing. Oh, really? He um, doesn't get to sing. Did did Goku sing in the original? I don't know. I, he might have. Uh, our friend who's seen the original, uh, he he told us that that oh, both you Goku haven't seen and you haven't, sing. You haven't gotten to see it yet, right? No, we no, haven't. No, we haven't. Ah, okay. Well, there's then uh, it's good to not spoil anything for you. Uh, then we haven't yet. Uh, but yeah, Vegeta's the only one that gets to sing, and I don't, and that was. Uh, the part that the the minute I walked into the booth, I said, "All right, I want to I want to practice this part first. And we actually recorded that whole singing scene. And then when I went back to do the rest of his voice uh, about a week later, I re-recorded all of it anyway. So Why is that? Uh, just because I I was so nervous about what it sounded like the yeah. first time. And, well, I recorded it first and and set down kind of a base of what it was going to sound like. And then I recorded all the background singers on it. I used Mike McFarland and uh, who plays Master Roshi and Meredith McCoy who plays Android Eighteen. And uh, Brina Palencia plays like Chaozu and Poir, and they're all the background singers. Yeah, and once yeah. I got once I got the background singers in there, then I went back and and sang it again. Oh, okay. And some other because I'd heard it so many times going through it, then I had some other ideas. Oh, cool. Um, the only I, the only thing I can think of that kind of relates to that in in in, in the sense that I did not get to sing, but what I did get to do at the very end of the film. This is spoiler, so I'm just to let you know. Um, is Goku is quoting Vegeta, and I and and he, he's quoting something Vegeta says earlier in the film, and I do a Vegeta impression as Goku. So it's like Goku's actually doing an impression of Vegeta. It's good. It's funny. Yeah, it ended up being. So that's the only thing I got to that was close to that. But I think this thing is going to be even funnier. That's, <laughs> that's really it's, funny. It's, I was actually going to. I was actually going to ask uh, you, Sean, to do your best Vegeta impression, and and you, Chris, to do your best Goku impression. Mm. Hey, I'm Goku. I'm a loser. <laughs> I am the prince of things. <laughs> things, yes. <laughs> hey guys, I have an idea. Let's just let him go. Yeah. <laughs> well, we do have to imitate each other for Vegito and Gogeta. And what's right. interesting about that is when we do Gogeta, I'll record everything first, and then Chris has to come in and kind of match my peaks and valleys. And when you do Vegito, he records first, and I match him. And what's interesting about that is when I record Vegito, the width of the peaks and valleys is just it's a big crash. Like everything is, it's, it's not Vegeta's not going up and down. It's yeah, yeah. all over the place. And then you were telling me you were having trouble. Oh, dude, just dealing with your voice. It's just like I never know what to expect. Cause it, like I never play happy, fun, kind of happy go lucky, <laughs> positive very often. So um, just those sorts of reads are complicated for me. <laughs> now in this movie, Vegeta and Goku fuse with Dende. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And yeah. You haven't seen it yet. You'll know that too. Yeah, that's Vegeta true. and who fuses Dende? The Go remember Vegeta and Goku fuse and with Dende. <laughs> 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 remember that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys. To become Super Saiyan Hello Junior. <laughs> well, Justin, I guess that means that you have to do both your best Goku and Vegeta impression. That's true. Mm. <laughs> I think that I should probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Incidentally, what we were talking about, like the with Vegeta and Piccolo and having to match each other, Kara and Laura have the same exact problem, actually. They, what do you mean? As far as Kara having a hard time like matching, like, it's kind of almost the opposite. Kara has a really hard time matching 
Laura Bailey's reads for Trunks because he's such a punk and he does such like <laughs> funny reads that when Laura does it first, Kara's just like, I have no idea where that came from. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know that. All right, Justin, it's, uh, it's your turn. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Vegeta, uh, which sounds something like, Justin, we're going to be a little bit late turning these episodes in. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then Goku would be uh, Justin. I'm going to be late for the cinema this morning. That's what I said on the way here. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. Oh wait, I love it. Yeah, by the way, in case you're wondering, here's a summary of the film on one sheet of paper. Well, that's the character summary. Oh, character yeah, summary. That was the summary of the entire film. No, <laughs> Can you guys hear us okay? You look like you're kind of leaning into your computer a little can bit. Can you hear you us guys. okay? Oh, yeah, no, we can totally hear you guys. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, we're, we're on sort of a delay, so when we say something funny, you guys go... <laughs> <laughs> Our jokes have to float down. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> we're more laughing at us than we <laughs> at us. Um, so, uh, we want to know, has anyone ever recognized your guy's voice while you're, like, ordering food or doing some regular, everyday thing? Actually, um, I have been recognized, uh, numerous times on the street. One of my favorite stories, I got, well, I got recognized when we moved to L.A., my girlfriend and I went to go get her license at the DMV, and literally five minutes after I walk in, some kid walk, sheepishly walks up to me and goes, Hey, man, you go, boo? And I'm like, uh, <laughs> yes, I'm just here getting licensed with my girlfriend, but nice to meet you. But the best, my favorite one was when I was on the E train in Manhattan when I was living in New York still. And this Indian guy walks up to me and he goes, I know you. You are the Goku. I go, Sorry, what? I, you, are the, you are the Goku. I know you. I have all your YouTube videos and I have a job interview today. And because I met the Goku, I will get the job. <laughs> Exactly what he said. I'm like, well, it's really nice to meet you. And, I, and he was very well dressed in his suit. And he was clear. He was like a twenty something. And he's like, he was telling me, watch all my Google, well, all my Google videos. That's it. I watch all your Google videos. And, and and he, I don't know if he got the job, but I was like, well, I was like, very nice to meet you. Thank you. And <laughs> I think it's kind of neat that somebody met Goku at the DMV. Yeah, <laughs> that is neat. It's kind of ironic. Driving episode. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's happened to me a few times. It's because I, of the internet. You know? I mostly get recognized anytime I go into GameStop or <laughs> or, or uh, grocery stores are the two places <laughs> I get recognized. Have you, no ever, funny. have you ever ordered food in the Vegeta voice? Uh, I I occasionally use those voices to get what I want. Yes, uh, <laughs> but I only use Piccolo's voice when I'm like at a at a concert or something. Because that's like Piccolo's voice is perfect for those moments where I, I don't really like it when people go like, "Yeah, I love the song" or whatever. But if I do, I always I'm like, "Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> this is my thing. That's funny. Sorry, people who have the room next door. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I wanted to ask you guys, uh, you know, I've loved Dragon Ball Z for a big chunk of my life, um, but because of, like, Dragon Ball Kai, there's a whole new generation of young fans. What's it like to have, like, all these fans of all these different age ranges? <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's I think it's one. a... Well, yeah, it's great. <laughs> I, but I do think that it increases the responsibility of, of what we're putting out, uh, and I and I think that especially with these two guys at the helm, I mean, we're just these guys are continuously bringing the game. So I mean, it just keeps rising level upon level. So you know, the the first season of Kai came out, and uh, you know these guys do everything at it, and then now you know uh, we've begun working on more of that, and uh, and again they just up the level again. Battle of Gods. I mean, it's just really incredible. Just when you think that you know we've done this for twenty years and you can't find another level or another depth mm -hmm. of of uh, you know character here, these guys have found it. And I think under Chris's leadership and talented folks like Sean and 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 the other members of the cast, I mean, they're bringing life into these characters that, quite frankly, are just as energized as the first day that that we started to record. And now with you know twenty years experience, yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. I think uh, you know in terms of answering the question about age of range of fans, it's it's less about age range of fans. I've noticed ex with the ex with it being more like when we first got on the show, it's almost like your perception as a, as a, as a character, as a voice actor changed. Like when we first got on the show, you'd meet people and like, oh, it's cool that you're on the show and they're very appreciative and very cool. Now that you've been doing it so long and you have so many kids that have grown up, kids that have grown up have their own kids who are watching it with them, the, the general attitude I experience is, is gone from, 
I think it's great that in pulling on the show too, you're a voice acting legend or you're a legend. And it's a weird shift in like this legend status, which I don't necessarily attribute to myself at all. But when you have somebody coming at you and, and you can feel the difference of the weight of all those years when you interact with fans in general versus when you first when we were first doing the first two, three, four, five years. Oh, but the first few years when we were doing this, like 1999, we went to our first like Comic Con and went yeah. to our first Anime Expo. We were all just shocked and surprised by even what it was because it was a world that I didn't even know existed. Like, right. I had never been to a convention before Comic Con. Like, yeah. And that was a huge shock. And meeting all those kids back then. Uh, I mean, we were just as enamored that we were in that. We had no idea what we were signing up for when we, we yeah. signed up for the show. So having a line four hours long to meet us was all of us. Um, and the most endearing thing people say these days is so many kids. And Sean can fill in the blank on this sentence. Uh, let's see if you can do it. No. Uh, kid comes up. He's about 22, 23 years old. He goes, dude, you were my childhood. Exactly. Yeah. Like every kid who comes up. So, I mean, I'd say... A good fifty percent of people that I meet nowadays are like I ran home from school every day. I you know I ran home. I, I skipped school. I didn't do my homework. I did everything I could just to get home to watch Dragon Ball Z every single day. Yeah, and we when we meet people who who are uh, have their who are in the industry themselves, famous actors, other actors. But like my kids are watching that every day. I met Journey at the airport, and they were at the same convention we were at. And I was talking to Neil Sean, and he was like. Yeah, you know, those kids are, you know, they go, all oh, my friends, I don't know how he has kids, but he was talking about his kids or someone else's kids who all watch all the stuff of all the, not necessarily Dragon Ball Z, but all the anime and stuff that they were staying at the same hotel. And I said, yeah, those kids are, a lot of those kids are dressed up in like characters I play. You know, so there's this weird cycle. And the only way I can put it in perspective for myself is thinking about what was my childhood growing up? What did I rush home to see? And for me, you know, uh, anytime I start thinking I'm getting good at voice acting, I just go watch a Mel Blanc cartoon and I'm humbled immediately because that guy is still... That guy's still the king of, of characterization and voice acting, in my opinion. Uh, there are great guys that are, I think, maybe equal to him in some ways, but that guy's just the... And I'll go watch a Bugs Bunny cartoon and go, holy shit, this guy can bring it. So it's just... That was my childhood going on, and I think I would have completely shaken uncontrollably had I had a chance to meet him. And I have gotten to be on the stage with some famous people that I have influenced me, and, and I did geek out a couple times and almost lost my shit. I was sharing the stage with Bill Farmer, the voice of Goofy, and Rob Paulson, the voice of uh, Pinky and Yakko, and I'm like hanging out with these guys going, holy shit, I am like, I'm geeking out while I'm sitting next to them. So it's just this cycle of art, you know, that we all do, and just it's just important to keep it in perspective. And and when some kids say childhood, you know, you have to do the grain of salt in the sense that, you know, you appreciate it, but you also know that you had your own childhood, that, you know, that, that you were going, I'm talking in circles, I'm still waking up, you guys, I'm sorry. It's okay. It's, it's a good start. <laughs> it, it makes sense to me. It's okay. very humbling, and yeah. I, like I don't even I don't even have a witty comeback. I tried like, uh, well, you were my manhood, but that always comes out weird. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's it's extremely humbling, and it's it's so neat to see because there's these kids who are now driving like you know these people that we even met at some of our first cons. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, they have they come back and they have kids. Just as a side note, like back when we were first working on the series. Pete, kids were sending in letters and letters and letters and, and postcards and pictures and stuff to Funimation, and they wanted us to sign them and return them to them. But most of them didn't have self-addressed stamped envelopes, and I was so bad about even putting my own bills in the mail that the idea of right. sending back fan mail was just beyond my comprehension. Not to mention we're working already 110 hours a week to try and get Dragon Ball Z in the air, so it just didn't happen. But over the last several years, I've been going through all the boxes and returning all the letters back to the <laughs> To the kids. Ah. <laughs> said, so some girl came up to me at a con recently and she goes, um, what? Did you send a picture of your face to my grandma's house? Uh, <laughs> I said, oh, well, that didn't, did you write me a letter like 10 years ago? Mm -hmm. She goes, oh, yeah, one summer I wrote you from my grandma's house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got, I got a, 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 a fan mail sent to my agent that was for a character. I, okay, now here's a funny story. I... I worked on G.I. Joe, and I played Firefly, but they credited me also as playing Snake Eyes, I think Snake Eyes. Snake Eyes doesn't have any lines <laughs> at all. So Eric Stewart, I believe, he has a joke, credited me as such. So I got a fan mail to my agent, and I have not returned it yet, and I don't know if I'm going to, and begging me for an autograph of Snake Eyes with a, an, with a card, a Snake Dude, Eyes card, it. and I'm tempted to say, I, go, I had no lines or something. <laughs> That's the only thing I can think of weird that's like through the mail like that. Yeah. You know?
Sorry. Sorry, we're derailing you. What are, yeah. Do you have other questions? We, we're right on this train with you. So. <laughs> um, okay. So, uh, is there any word if you guys will be reprising the voices for Dragon Ball Xenoverse? Oh, we're for the Xenoverse, for the video game. Uh, there has been no, uh, the game has been announced, but the recording schedule for that game has not been established yet. So uh, we don't even know. I know about as much about that game as you guys do at this point. I've seen the trailer and, and well, I voiced the trailer, and that's about that's about all I know. So, so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys, um, you know, you've been able to play these characters over the past few years on and off. But what's the longest time you guys have been away from playing like Goku or Vegeta? Not very. Like less than a. I don't think more than a year at any time. Yeah, there might have been. There may have actually been a. Man, because then we'd have a game. Yeah. Like every year we'd have a game. It's so, something. It's either a game or new episodes, or not new episodes, or like revamped episodes, or Kai or yeah. something. We've been doing this pretty much straight for many, many years. And I don't think a lot of a lot of casts or a lot of series can say that, with the exception of say The Simpsons or or uh, other shows like that, especially a dub cast like ours. To be and especially, I don't think it's ever been done, with the exception of maybe one or two instances where you get to go back. And for, for go to Dragon Ball Z and then go to Dragon Ball Z Kai uh, and re re redo essentially because it's the same story just edited down to its original manga form. Uh, to be able to redo that after you got to practice the character for ten years was pretty uh, pretty awesome. And I don't think a lot of people get to do that. It's a weird. This this is just I don't know if, it, if it's, you know on some metaphysical level like this is just the weird energy power of the Toriyama or something. Yeah. <laughs> I know? would like to say that. You know, Sean mentions it's it's rare. <clears throat> I think what's really rare and and what's incredible and what's part of the the energy that spins back and forth between the fans of the series here in America and the American voice cast is that there's an equal level of loyalty, and that doesn't always happen. Uh, the fact that that as much of the original cast that has been retained has has you know will come back to do these roles and to come back to do it again as Sean mentioned he's lived in New York he's now in LA I mean the fact that everybody still wants to be a part of this I think speaks volumes for uh, the series I also think it speaks volumes for this movie but uh, I just think it speaks volumes both of the show and the energy that it creates, but I think it also speaks so much to to the to the cast members and to the folks who have been involved with this for twenty years that they just keep coming back for more, because uh, you know. And I don't. I, there comes a point. I mean, the reward's not money <laughs> in any of this, but the fact that they that it's just it's important to them is is incredible. I think after this much time. Um, so now that you guys have been immersed in this world for so many years, and you've seen, uh, you know, kids dressing up as characters you've played, have you ever cosplayed? Um, I have a picture. Wait, uh, I, the only closest I've come to cosplaying was my girlfriend dressed up as Chi Chi one year because she actually looks a lot like her um, naturally, and she put on a Chi Chi cosplay. Ooh, oh, what's that it. one? <laughs> oh no, you don't want to see that one. Okay. Uh, <laughs> And I put on just a Goku t-shirt, the orange one that has the Goku symbol on it, and that's it. That's the closest I've ever come to cosplaying. I do remember early on, I can't find a picture right now, but I do remember early on when we, we first got hired in early 2000, we, my first technical, my first appearance was, technically my first appearance was at a Burger King, and I'm on the phone with the manager and of the Burger King, and he goes, so, you gonna wear the head? And I'm like, where's the head? What are you talking about? Goes, you gonna wear the head, you know, for the sign, you gonna wear the Goku head. And I'm like, I'm not wearing a Goku head. I'm a voice actor. And we show up, and Gen Fukunaga, our president of Funimation, is there. Sonny Strait is there. And it was doing the Dragon Ball Z. Remember the toys that came out to Burger King in the early 2000s? Yes. It was promotion for that while Akon was With the going. driving episode. With the driving episode, that's right. And it was for Akon. And we show up. Nobody's there. Like, nobody's there. I'm not wearing you a head. You should have worn a head. should have worn a head. I mean, he sounded like Fred Flintstone. He really did. So I'm not wearing the fucking head. So anyway, we, <laughs> that's it. Yeah, the only the only time I've ever even come close to cosplaying was one time in uh, uh, I guess it was in Winnipeg. They were having kind of a, a late night panel in one of the rooms, and I, in prep, like knowing that this was going to happen because a, a, a group of actors were up on the stage, I 
I had my handler take me to the dealer room and I bought this crazy like frog like jumpsuit like onesie thing <laughs> just with these goggles and I put this bandana over my face and I waited in line to ask a question and I like, bobbed back and forth like I, I, I <laughs> like, <nervous>. or something. <laughs> uh, and so I'm bobbing back and forth and finally it got to be my turn I'm like it, uh, it, it, my, I'm in my birthday and I was, uh, was wondering if I if I could, 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 could dan dance with one of you guys. <laughs> it was this weird, awkward pause, and, and Monica's like, uh, oh, Monica Real, she's like, oh, oh okay. And so I got up, and then I just climbed up on top of her. It was like dry humping her head or something. <laughs> and someone was about to punch me before I like took off my mask. They're like, oh, son of a bitch. Ah. Yeah, that's a close um, I will um, be wearing the head at the movie. No, I'm <laughs> I can do it. If uh, you were You're to be getting the head of the movie, <laughs> oh! If uh, if you guys were to cosplay a Dragon Ball Z character, which one would you would each of you cosplay? I'm a big Piccolo fan, so I would either do Piccolo or Goku in the Yard Rat outfit because I love that outfit. Um, and if I could do Bubbles, that would be fun. <laughs> or, or, or Gregory, but I had to make myself very small. Those are my other favorite characters on the show. I'd, I'd probably be Mr. Satan. <laughs> Because I, I that way I'd get to actually wear hair. So. <laughs> I'm gonna dress up as Johnny Firecracker. Oh yeah, <laughs> that was in the. Uh, no, that was the Jim Fields, I believe. I was his cameraman, Lionel. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're no, right. I, I don't know who would I who would I cosplay as. I don't know. I, I, I like a big fat suit and be uh, the Ox King. That would be yeah. kind of fun. Yeah. I think the Ox King would be a fun. I actually costume. saw a great Ox King because there's there's a lot of dudes with Ox King shape at. <laughs> <laughs> he was like this huge. I mean, it must have been like six and a half feet tall, like shaped like a pear, wearing like Ox King's outfit, and it was brilliant. It wow! Was, I thought I met him. I saw a pretty good King Kai who was a similar shape, mm. and I actually dubbed him, and uh, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> I can make a good bull <laughs> Um, you know, I wanted to know, uh, some of you guys, you've been playing this character for so long, some of you guys have, um, certain things you say often. Sean, of course, you say, Kamehameha. You've said it many, many times. Are there any things that, that, uh, your characters say, um, often that you really like saying, or that you really hate voice acting? But first of all, I hate that he says, but one of the things he did, the spoiler alert, so just in case anybody's watching this interview, the spoiler alert, there is a scene in the movie where Goku, where they actually poke fun at that. Where Goku's walking up to introduce himself, and he goes, "Hey, it's me, Goku!" Just like in the trailer for every episode. And right before he gets to Goku, King Kai punches him in the face. <laughs> Who are you gonna say that? And then like they make fun of the fact that Goku's always like, "Hey, it's me, Goku!" Next time on Dragon Ball, but he's not doing it. He's just doing it in a moment where he's introducing himself. So that that's annoying. Um, Kamehameha can be annoying only in the sense that it's a very uh, challenging and difficult thing to do, and you also want to how you're gonna do it. Um, anytime Goku's just like. I like it. I like when Goku says that things that are like you know when he's tough, badass. But when he's like totally nerding out, you know, it's just I. I'm pretty hard on myself. I just hate it. I hate. I mean, I love Goku the character, but I hate my own my own inflections that I have to do. But to me, it's the only thing that fits with the character. So I think that Goku is like one of the most annoying Boy Scouts ever. But you love him anyway. Kind of like Superman's annoying Boy Scout. I guess that's why there's so many Goku Superman battles. So I don't want to talk disparaging about my character because Goku's a wonderful character. But you know, when you live with something, anybody you love, you live with them so long, uh, you can get annoyed. I trust me, my girlfriend's very annoyed with me all the time. <laughs> Uh, they've only lived together for like a month. A month, so no, we've been living together like three years. But a still, month. a month. But uh, but he, yeah, Goku. There's things he says that I I, I, I get. I'm mean, Chris. Take it over. <laughs> I don't know that I have anything that's annoying, but the lines that always kind of are the what we call reference lines. So when I pop in and do Dende's voice, I always start with that. Go, oh come on, Gohan. You know, I'm a healer, not a fighter. Uh, and then I guess, you know, with, with, oh, I, I can't say this, and this isn't with this movie, but uh, Raditz's character, our, our previous producer, would always get on to me because, uh, well, hello, brother. And he would hate when I would have brother end with an A. But he would, would refer to a certain stereotype with that, and so I'd always have to redo that over and tell him, brother, brother, brother. That was a little... We, no, Raditz is not a rapper. He is not a hip artist, so he does not say brother. It is pretty funny. There's something about the way you do that voice, but every now and then, like, you do put a UH on the end of some words that are funny. Like, Raleigh and I, like, the engineer and I have laughed about it at times because he'll come in, like, 
I've got all this power I need in my fingertips. Finger. You get like, I hate tips. I hate ours. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of anything I've said over 9,000 times that'd be annoying. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything else you want to ask before we run out of here, or is that good? Um, I mean, we'll be seeing you guys again on the red carpet, so uh, I guess we can, we can wrap it up. Uh, oh, you're going to leave your house? You're going to leave your, your house? house? No, they're going to bring their whole house. <laughs> we're going to bring the sheets. They're going to cuddle just have the Skype. Uh, we're going to yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, guys, someone with um, a laptop. Thanks so much for taking this time. We're both giant fans of Dragon Ball Z. We're super excited about Dragon Ball Z Battle of Gods. And, uh, you know, just uh, thanks so much. Thank you, Thank guys. You. Thanks. Take care. Take care. See you later.